hello, hello, and hello, and welcome to episode 2 of Sport Moment. And this season, we've already started on a different note, but this time around, we have got a lot for you. So, we had the Zambezi Steelers versus Vodacom Blue Bulls match. We had Manchester City doing what they love to do the most, which is winning a championship, and a lot in store in this episode. And we also have another story about two local clubs. I'm Lance, your host, and this is Sport Moment. So we start with our local soccer news and yes there's still a blackout, apologies guys but hey there's nothing we can do but we'll still give you the result as it is. So, FC Platinum won their weekend game, making them go on top of Ngezi Platinum. Ngezi Platinum also drew, but the Platinum boys are still on top, number one and number two. And then we have Highlanders playing chicken in, in a top four battle. They drew that match, meaning that the points remain the same. You only add one point on top of each. And then we cross over to the English Premier League. So Manchester City finally won the league, and Pep Guardiola is now a successful manager in England. They won 3-1 against Tottenham at Wembley Stadium, making them the league champions. And then we cross over to La Liga. So Barcelona was playing versus Valencia and their outstanding record of being the invincibles in the Spanish La Liga still stands. I think it's now 39 games and these guys still haven't been beaten. In our rugby news, yes, the weekend, the Vodacom Blue Bulls came and humbled the Zambezi Steelers. I am sorry to say this in public, but I don't want but still, it was a good match. 61-19 was the final score. If it wasn't for Linians and Zikube, Dominator that was 61-0. But it's still fine. We are successful in uh, putting in a good performance. But we still have a lot of work to do. So we had interviews with people such as Kudzai Mashawi, who also played in that match, as well as the legendary Rodney Sayoli. He's got a tricky surname. Yeah, but he's an all black legend. And you see, most of these interviews are on this episode. So check them out. The game was okay. We felt, yeah, um, if we had the ball more often, we could have done more. And it's small little things that we still need to work on. It's a brilliant process. We just got together for like a week, so you can't really expect much in a week. But I mean, guys coming from all over, we got together. I mean, it's a positive start. We, we're heading somewhere. Um, they're going to do really well with these players. And and the players are going to grow and, and uh, hopefully play even higher on the sense. The boys are really, really good and they've got a long way to go. You know, they're, they're, they're doing well and they're going to go a long way. So I'm really enjoying um, my time here. We had a decent support today. In terms of the game, our team, they did well. They're playing first tier teams. And um, they did well. Highlanders go so Chila Moya, established in 1926, boost of being the oldest club in Zimbabwe, whilst Dynamo Zimbabwe, the glamour boys, or Chazunguza, established in 1963, have a sense of entitlement that they have a multitude of 7 million Zealand supporters across the country. Highlanders created the Soweto Stand, a stronghold with recognized supporters allowed to sit with personalized seats. Those who dare to sit there without a traceable track record of supporting the team can do so at their parole. Dynamos could not be outdone. They fashioned the Vietnam Ant, synonymous with tried and tested supporters whose mandate seemed to be that of singing and dancing for the team. It is strictly and exclusively a Dynamo site. Highlanders have their famous statement, and an arrogant anecdote. Dynamos, on the other hand, have also created their statements Nikayese Irkufa. And for ages, they have made blasphemous replica jerseys with inscriptions If God hated Dynamos, he wouldn't have made the sky blue. Such is the frenzy and enthusiasm that the two oldest and most successful teams have coined for the world to revere in what they passionately believe is beyond the soccer pitch. Highlanders have won the league championship nine times and Dynamos have won the league championship 16 times. The two teams have similar fairy tales. 
Dynamo's were the first to set a trend of winning the championship in four consecutive years. They first achieved it from 1980 to 1983 and repeated the same feat from 2011 to 2014. Highlanders, on the other hand, could have only matched this remarkable and trailblazing achievement from 1999 to 2002. The football debate that has remained inclusive has been about the greatest Zimbabwe player of all time. Few names are thrown around, but they all come from either Dynamos or Highlanders. George Shire, Dynamos, Moses Chunga, Dynamos, and Peter Dlovo, Highlanders, are regarded as the best players ever. They have failed dismally, that is, to turn their football exploits on the pitch to viable business entities that can turn into formidable institutions. This sad reality haunts them to this very day. Highlanders, being the first born in a big family of football teams in the country, should have done better. The team has a small clubhouse that is in the outskirts of the Bulawayo CBD. It is not a depiction of where the team could be. A team of their caliber and status, not in Bulawayo only, but the whole of Zimbabwe, should have a club village or a team bus of their own. The team has failed to attract meaningful sponsors and boost of having a bus donated to them by a funeral cover company. Besides all this, the team prides itself in an efficient management style and office bearers have shown flashes of brilliance. Unfortunately, it ends there. Dynamos is a stereotype that have broken every rule in the book. The same way they have broken domestic football records, they have shown everyone and even those who don't care that they are unprofessional, they have the privilege of belonging to both worlds, success and failure. Arguably one of the most mismanaged teams in the country with a reputation of not paying players despite having the widest support base in the country. The team strangely does not have a home ground that they personalized. A team bus had to be donated to them as part of a sponsorship deal. The same way they have risen above everyone and made names for themselves should translate to how they properly and professionally run their institutions. Well, that's it for this episode of Sport Moment, guys. Make sure that you follow us on our social media platforms as well as on www.zn.co.zw. A big shout out to Chefs on Core for feeding us, as well as Kairos Sports for the eventful day. And the crew behind the scenes, guys, Dimitri and As for me, goodbye. Six and four, and six to the left.